welcome to Worship for Lakehead Lutheran Church in Madison, Wisconsin for Sunday, February 7th. Just a few announcements before we get the service started. Uh, first, on Saturday, February 13th, next Saturday, there's a meet and greet for our pastoral candidate uh, from 1 to 2.30 in the parking lot, socially distanced, uh, masks are required, but you'll get a chance to meet that person. And then uh, a little after that, from 3 to 4.30, if you're more comfortable, we'll have the same thing via Zoom. So you can meet our pastoral candidate then. And then on Sunday, February 14th at 11 a.m., we will have a congregational meeting for the sole purpose of considering the, the uh, call of a new pastor uh, as recommended by the call committee. So I hope you can join us for both of those on next Saturday and Sunday, February 13th and 14th. Then on uh, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, uh, February 17th, we'll be having a service recorded for you uh, that will be available via our YouTube uh, site. And then also we'll, we'll have Lenten services during Lent um, that'll be available on Thursdays online. And we'll enjoy a shortened version of the Hold and Evening uh, prayer service, which we all have enjoyed in the past. In addition, just a reminder, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. is coffee hour via Zoom. And also at 10 a.m. is centering prayer. Uh, both uh, via Zoom, uh, linked in the weekly messenger. So uh, I'd like you to welcome today again, uh, former Bishop, Bishop George Carlson, who will be presiding and preaching. Welcome, Pastor George. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in the call to worship. How good it is to sing praises to our God he heals the brokenhearted, binding up their wounds. He counts the stars and count, calls them each by name. How great is our God. His power is absolute and his understanding beyond comprehension. So come, sing out your thanksgiving to God. Offer to God that worship that belongs to him alone.
the Lord is with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the water, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of Christ's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Many the hearts that yearn to be lost. 
Let us be servants to one another. Signs of your kingdom come. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the dark. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Edge. This is Lesta Searles with the readings for today. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, no one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm glad you children have gathered to worship online with us today. Come up closer to the screen if you wish. Do you see what I have here? Yep, it's a globe. And the globe, this globe shows water black, but we know it's not black, unless it's really polluted. It's blue. And then look at the countries. There are all kinds of different colors. But if you were out in space and looking back, you wouldn't see any of those colors or the divisions between countries and nations. You'd see brown and green, white. It would be beautiful. Yes, I want you to hear again something that we just heard. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not grow faint. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When I heard those words, I thought of two things. A song. 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Well, I like that song. I've known it for years and years, and there are many more verses. And then there were those other words. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And that makes me think way back when I was a boy on a farm in Iowa. We didn't have eagles there, but we had hawks. I've seen eagles in Wisconsin, but not in Iowa in those days. I've seen eagles in Iowa since then, in later years, but not back in those days. But I saw many hawks. And when I would be out in the field helping my dad harvest oats, sometimes I was just sitting on the tractor waiting for dad to bring a dump of oats to put in the wagon. I would look at those hawks and I just thought, if I wasn't a human, I'd like to be a hawk. They were just floating on the air. They were gliding. They were soaring. They were beautiful. And maybe that's why I like these words from the psalm. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like, with wings like eagles. God, the creator of the whole world, gives us strength. So we feel free as an eagle because God loves us. Well, I'm glad you spent a little time with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and the rest of worship. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings." The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the 29th verse. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the gospel there also, for that is what I came to do. And then he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, our Advocate. Amen. I wonder if you've known someone like Grant. As soon as he turned 15, he got a job at a grocery store. He soon became known as the Eager Beaver. Asked to stock shelves, Grant seemed to get that done in less time than any co-worker. Asked to pack groceries, 
He did it neatly and carefully while chatting carefully with the customers. Asked to sweep the floor, he almost ran for the equipment. An eager beaver. Now, I wonder if that describes you on your first job or a co-worker who joined you in your place of work. Excited and eager, the new person, whether you or another, pitches in to make a difference, to succeed, to apply what they have known, and to learn new skills. Have you ever considered Jesus an eager beaver? We entered this season of epiphany, this season of light shining out, just five weeks ago. After his baptism, Jesus faced temptation in the wilderness. And when he returned, Jesus hit the ground running, doing the work God meant him to do, an eager beaver. Now, if we take a slow read of this first chapter of Mark, where we've been dwelling the last few weeks, I mean pausing and pondering after each paragraph, looking for the point that Mark is trying to make, considering the time frame and places of the action. We may decide we need a rest after just that first chapter. Many of us may feel like we need a time of rest right now because of the turmoil and chaos in our nation, an invasion of a virus a year ago that has affected over 25 million people and killed around 450,000 in our country alone, racial tensions at high levels since last summer, and a contentious, contested national election last fall that lasted into the winter. All these in addition to what, may be, what we may be facing personally. Jesus began his work in a time of tension and turmoil. His relative and friend John the Baptist had just died as ordered by Herod the ruler, killed. He wanted him out of the picture. So imagine the grief and danger Jesus must have felt as a friend, as a relative of John, just as many of us may feel grief and danger right now. So what does Jesus do? He forges ahead, eager to let people know that here and now, God's realm has come to stay. From that time forward, Jesus opens people's eyes, opens our eyes to see God's realm in the midst of tension and turmoil in time of challenge and uncertainty. Jesus does not leave people the same, but brings newness beyond what they dreamed. Last Sunday, we heard and saw Jesus teaching in the synagogue, teaching with authority, unlike any the people had heard or seen before. And besides teaching, Jesus confronts an unclean spirit. Jesus engages in a ministry of resistance, resisting the evil that takes hold of a person and keeps them from the life that God intends. Jesus takes on the power of the cosmos of evil that diminishes those God loves and Jesus prevails. Now today, we see and hear Jesus again, still on the synagogue, the same day as the teaching and healing in the synagogue. But, and now Jesus has gone into a home. Did you know that Simon Peter, whom we might call the chief disciple, had a wife and mother-in-law? I think too often we think of those 12 disciples as some sort of extraordinary humans. But Simon lived in a family and had a mother-in-law who's sick. He's like us, a husband who cared about his family. We need to understand that disciples were ordinary people like us with family and friends and jobs and social connections. Jesus who had faced the 
powers of evil that roamed the cosmos came into an ordinary person's home to help one person with an illness. His touch, his lifting her up, made her well. Her fever left her. And right away, she begins to do what she did so well, serve others, offer hospitality. Now, some might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, a woman's role isn't to serve others, to stay in the kitchen. She's been down with a fever. Why isn't Andrew or Simon taking over the hospitality role? Why aren't they in the kitchen? Okay, I'll take a minute. I don't see this text as any way putting women in the kitchen and not allowing them out. I see this action of Jesus as restoring the mother-in-law to life in her community. He does more than free her from her fever. He frees her so she can do what she loves and does so well, serve as a gracious hosty, hostess to her family and to this stranger who had come into the family home. I invite you to ponder this. Jesus heals people for three reasons. First, to show that God wants people to be free from illness. Second, to restore people to the community from which illness had separated them, the community to which they belonged. And third, to free the person who is ill to live into their passion, their calling as one beloved by God which always includes serving others. Jesus works to restore health, restore community, and restore service. After that encounter, still on the Sabbath, Jesus keeps doing God's work. People have seen and heard what Jesus did, so they bring others to him, others who were sick, or possessed by a demon. Jesus has dealt with both of those issues already that day, but now Jesus isn't going to people who need his help, but people are bringing others to him. In that, I see the kingdom of God at work, not just in Jesus, but in the crowd. God intends that we care for one another, look out for one another, help one another when we see a need. The people do kingdom work in bringing others to Jesus. A community of mutual care is a sign of the kingdom of God among us, here and now. Now I call your attention to something that kind of perplexes me, perhaps perplexes you. Mark tells us that the people brought all to Jesus and later says Jesus cured many and cast out many demons. Huh. It makes me wonder. Brought all, cured many. I wonder why Jesus didn't cure all. I have no definitive answer. I do see Jesus facing two challenges, illness and demon possession. And in that, in those days, people attributed those to the power of evil, a broken connection with God, a domination by all that opposed God. Looking at our world today, we know the reality of evil that still oppresses many, that does not allow for the freedom per to pursue their dreams or fulfill their potential. We know people possessed by evil, trapped by greed or pursuit of power or fear of those different from themselves. Those have no place in the realm of God, the way God wants life for every person. We know evil used its mightiest weapon, death, to get rid of Jesus to get Jesus out of the picture. Yet death did not defeat him. Jesus rose to life, 
letting us know a power greater than evil has the last word. And in this meantime in which we live, this time between the resurrection of Jesus and God making all things new in the end, evil keeps trying to win the day. So people still get sick and deal with evil and demon possession, though we don't use that term much. Some get better, others do not. And evil tries to use our experiences to turn us away from God. See, your God really isn't all that great. Why would God let that happen? I do not see God as a master puppeteer controlling every facet of our lives. But I see a God who gives us freedom to make decisions and take actions that may help or harm ourselves and others. I do see God as wanting us to live in God's realm where we bring others to Jesus because we care so deeply for them as God's beloved. Finally, Jesus takes a break. I can't imagine the physical and emotional energy Jesus must have used that Sabbath, teaching, healing, driving out demons. During this pandemic crisis, many of us feel spent emotionally, physically, spiritually. Routines have changed in our homes, our workplaces, our schools, our volunteerism, even in our congregation. We've needed to learn new ways of connecting with those we love. We miss face-to-face -face conversations and gatherings with others. We fear getting the virus or not returning to work or not having enough resources for daily needs like food or shelter. We grieve so many losses, including death, death of loved ones who died without us being with them. Jesus had a way to deal with exhaustion. Take a break to center on God. Jesus went to a deserted place to pray. Do you have a deserted place? A room where you live? A bench in a mall? A path in the woods? A ride in a car? We do not know just where Jesus went. We do not know for what or how Jesus prayed. I suggest quieting your mind. Breathe deeply. Inhale. Inhale fresh air, oxygen to burn energy. Hold your breath. Exhale stale air, carbon dioxide for the good of plants. Again and again, continue breathing. Listen. Give thanks for this moment. Give thanks for life. Listen. Review what God has brought you to this place. Say it out loud. Listen. Think of others. Name them out loud. Pray for them. Listen. Ask for help for what you see you need. Ask God to direct you. Listen. Give thanks for what lies ahead. Listen. I don't know if Jesus prayed like that. I do know that when his disciples found him, they wanted him to resume his ministry. Everyone is searching for you, they told him. And Jesus replied, let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for this is what I came out to do. Jesus had a mission to fulfill. 
So do you, people of God at Lake Edge. You've taken a forced break from what you've known due to the coronavirus and also due to the leaving of your pastor and interim pastors. You've had time to pray, to listen, to look forward. When Jesus went back to work, he went in a new direction, not back to the same, the familiar. That meant fresh challenges, new unknowns. So with you here at Lake Edge, be prepared for newness, for unknowns, for opportunities you may not have considered at all. Know this, beloved of God, Jesus wants you to be free from all that keeps you from, from, from whatever diminishes you so that your life will be as God intends. Know that Jesus goes before you personally and as a congregation, leading you into restoring health, restoring community, resisting evil, and restoring those whom God loves to serving others. With Jesus, we can be eager beavers for mission and ministry. Amen.
have heard the word of our faith. Now we confess our belief in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For your church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountains, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, especially President Biden, Vice President Harris, and all who serve in Congress, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain, COVID-19, or other sickness, for those workers on the front line battling COVID-19 and others exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For Lake Edge Lutheran in this time of transition, for outreach and social ministries centered here, for staff and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this congregation who open us to new understandings, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, may their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. United as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready. Let us share this meal. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.